Welcome to Learn Customs 01. I'm Evil Jet, and this is a beginner's guide for the Escape from Tarkov map, Customs. If you'd like to learn 32 of the most important places a PMC should know, including extracts, task locations, key spawns, and a handful of bonus spots, continue watching. You will get the most out of this guide if you follow along on a second screen. And now is a good time to load up an offline raid and head over to Crossroads. That's where we begin. And here we are at Crossroads. This is the first of the locations that we'll be checking out. And at each one, I'll slow down for a bit and display some extra information in the top right. Crossroads is connected to the main road of customs. If we keep following it all the way down and across the main bridge, it will take us to the other side of the map. I'll make sure to point it out as we go along in our journey. Our second location has us looking for an East Wing 310 key that can be used on Shoreline. It spawns on the driver's seat in front. Continuing on, we head down this road and we'll see a tanker up on the right. This is the first of four tankers that you'll need to put a marker on for the quest BP Depot. You take a marker, put it on the tank, and then you need to survive for a short time. Our next destination is going to take us through that hole in the wall, but first I want to point out an area on the right. The trailer park extract is against the white wall in the back over there. I wanted to point it out in case you need it. Now we will head into the container area and take a left. Head down to the white van and then go right. Right just after the blue car. And here we are at container number 88. Inside here, between the pallets, is where the dorms room 214 key can spawn. It's not here right now, but many of the keys I show you are worth checking for anytime you're in the area. So we'll take a left at the end. And before we leave the containers, I want to point out this car off to the right. Inside the trunk, there's a loose loot spawn, as well as a medical bag. These are great for finding random meds, as well as the saluas that you'll need for therapist early on. Across the street, we'll be checking out another potential key spawn inside the trailer park. Inside this bus, we get a second chance to find the East Wing 310 key for Shoreline. This key's worth 50,000 rubles at the time of making this video, and that's on the lower end for some of the ones I'll be showing you. Keys are a pretty valuable thing to be looking for, so I, I really wanted to make sure that I showed you where the majority of them were on the map. Location number six is the trailer park cabin. It does require a key. And all of this extra information can be found either on the wiki or I've organized it into a Google sheet for your convenience. Links to that will be in the description. Now we're gonna head back and this big building on the left is actually called Big Red. I imagine you can guess why we call it that. It's one of the more busy areas in customs. So I would be careful if you're heading here earlier on when I do my tasks, I like to come to these busy locations towards the end of the raid instead of the start. But hey, if you're looking for a fight, this is a good place to go. So we're going to go all the way up to the top. This does require a key as well. And then through here, the second door, we're going to have to kick it down. There are two things we're looking for in this office. The first is a document that you need for delivery from the past, and it's located above the drawers and below the desk. The other is a chance for the East Wing 306 key on the desk in front of the laptop. So I'll head out, head downstairs, and this time at the bottom we're going to take a right and get on out of here. I'll take a quick look to the left. This is the other side of the containers we were in near the start. Our exit from this area is the metal door next to this big metal gate. After we step outside, we can look to our left, and we will see Crossroads. And we're back on the main road of customs. Now it's time to get to the other side of the map. So there's four different ways to cross the water. I like to take the main bridge, and I'll explain a little bit about that. This is the main bridge here, and I'm going to show you why I don't like the lower ones first. So the lower ones tend to be more exposed. 
you can see one land bridge here, and there's another one off in the distance, kind of hard to see with the fog. These two have a lot of sight lines visible to potential enemies. When I'm looking for long range kills, this is exactly the area that I'm trying to catch players. Now off to the left, we have our last way for crossing over, and this is an easy place to set up an ambush. Lots of different spots to find cover in, and you'll also hear people running across the metal container. So I tend to take the big bridge, as I find I get ambushed far less. You may of course have a different experience, and that's part of what makes Tarkov fun. See that blue car up there? Take a right just past it, and that will take you to the other side of the map. We will end up back there after a bit of a detour. So we're gonna head down here between this wall, take a left, and cross the road. So we're looking for this building with this man and the th thumbs up. Let's just know that we're going the right way. And we're gonna follow this building all the way on the right. So we're coming up to location number nine of 32. And this one is for the unknown key. This key spawns once per raid, so if you don't see it here when you come to loot it, it just means that someone else got here first. One always does spawn per raid though. It can be found on the dead scav in this bush, along with some other random items similar to a duffel bag. We're gonna borrow that because we'll need it for later. And before we leave, I just wanted to point out, you see this? little area over here right in behind that tank that's the ruaf roadblock there's a light that i just shot at if that was lit up you would know that the ruaf roadblock was available we can always see what extracts are available by double pressing o i rebound mine to continuous to make it a little easier for me we'll continue running on and we're going to take a left here in this elbow and into the construction area and you may see something that looks somewhat familiar. This is the second of four tankers. So you need to put a marker on the side and survive for 30 seconds, but you don't need to stay near it after you've placed it. You just need to survive. We also have another objective at this tanker for the task called checking. You can find the bronze pocket watch on the floor of the cabin, and if you and a buddy both need it, there will be one for everyone that has the task active you may have already noticed, but I'm showing you where many of the keys that you need for these tasks are. Once we get to the dorms, I'll show you where you can find the machinery key too. We'll head all the way down this way. We're going to pass through this container on our right. And we're almost at our next objective. So this is number 12 of 32 for a task called Bad Rep Evidence. So we'll head in here. I'll show you where you can find your documents. Maybe on this table right to the right. And all of this information is really well laid out in the wiki. I highly recommend using the wiki anytime you're doing a task. So here we are again at the main road of customs. All the way down to the end would be that blue car. And this is the main road going all the way to the right. It keeps going. We'll link back up with that again soon. We're going to stop and show you one of the other busy areas of customs. And these are the dorms. So on the left we have the three story. You can only see it a little bit right now, but the two stories over there. We'll go have a look inside each of them. I'll point out a few things that you need to know. On this side right here, there are three doors going up. All of them can be opened. On the opposite side, only floor two can be opened. Something to keep in mind. We're going to head in on the first. I'm going to show you where another very valuable key spawns. Immediately to the right, you can actually see if it's here through the window, but I'll open the door to get a better look. Now right on this desk is one of the two potential spawns for the factory key that I'll show you. That key is worth over 100,000 rubles and is quite useful to have. Our next stop is on the second floor and to the right. We'll jump on this bed and duck into room 205, which is the one on our left. We're going to find the machinery key in the brown jacket, not the blue one. We use the machinery key to get in that tanker just a little ways back in the construction area. So again, this is room 205. It's the one you need to jump on a bed to get into. Next we run down the hall and to the right. We will be looking for room 220. It's got some bars on the front of it. There are a couple of things I'll point out inside this room too. This is number 15 and 16 in our list. Number 15 is for a task called Chemical Part 2. and You can find things you need on that shelf there. And the ZB014 key also spawns on this desk. That key is used for a bunker on the map woods. 
So we're going to head out, hang a left, go back up the only indoor stairwell in, in dorms. And before we go to the right for our next objective, I wanted to point out another room worth knowing about at the end and on the right. There you'll find the marked room. It's got a chance for high value loot and is often the main objective for people that visit the dorms. And here we are at room 303, and this is our final stop for the three story building. Inside we'll find the golden Zibbo for the task golden swag. For maximum survivability, I tend to come here later in the raid because I know people will often be on this floor looking for that marked room. If you're trying to find room 303 from this side, it'll be the second door on your right. This is where we started. But now we're going to head across to the two-story door. So this first little area here, we're going to peek through the window at the guard desk. I'm going to show you where you can find the key for this door in a moment, but I wanted to point out an extra key spawn. There's some other good loot in here too, as you can see. This cabinet has a spawn chance for the 104 key. I don't like going to this side of the dorm because there's only one door in and one door out. I find I get ambushed as I leave too often, so I just don't go there anymore. This door right here, the first door right before the table, I'm looking for this dead scav, and in his hand it can be hard to see, there'll be a little key right there, so that's the key for the, the guard desk to find it on him. You can loot him too, he's always got some good loot. So here we are at room 114. You need this room for some good loot and for the, the task called pharmacist. You get that one from therapist and you'll find the documents you need or the case you need right on top of that desk. You can see there, a safe computer and a mud box. And I'm gonna show you later on where you can find the key for room 110. So now we go upstairs, our last stop in the two-story dorms. So we're looking for this water barrel immediately on our left, room 206. And to complete this task, all you need to do is walk inside. So this is for Operation Aquarius. Here we are, we would have completed it. And now we're on our way. So this is the only other exit from this building, from the main area of the building anyways. And we're gonna head outside and behind the building, run all the way along it. I'm gonna point out that door that I don't like going into. I'll show why that it's easy to ambush. So that's the door right there that I don't like going into. There's all these little areas around here where someone could be laying in wait. They could be prone in a bush. They see or hear you inside there and they're just gonna to wait to get you. So as we run up, we see this green wall. Use that as my reference. Kinda of go forward. And we're gonna run in between these two big piles of rubble. And we're going to get back onto the main road of customs. It's a little bit of a pain to get under this pipe on our right, so I'm just going to take the long way. And now we're back on the main road of customs. Our next objective will be this gas station up on the left. So we're going to be coming up to number 21 of our 32 location stops. And it's in the back of this ambulance. The ambulance itself can spawn meds in the back, but the key that we're looking for is for the Emercom medical unit, and it spawns right on the seat right on the end there. Another high value key, and many of these keys are worth hundreds of thousands and even tripled that at the beginning of the wipe. People are always looking for them, so you're going to want to look every single time you have the opportunity to. Anytime you're in the area, always have a look for these keys. So heading out the gas station, we go to the back, and here we have another orange tanker. So we place our marker on there. All you have to do is survive for 30 seconds. And you don't need to stay near it. You can you can completely run away from those, those markers. Technically, I think someone can shoot a marker, but I've never seen that happen. I am told that it can happen though. Next, we're gonna run down to the end of this road. And our next stop is up at this building on the left. And I'm gonna point out a marker that you're gonna wanna remember. You can see this, this red symbol here. This means that there are potentially scabs nearby. A sniper scab actually spawns up top of the structure. And now we're at location number 19. So in here, well, found a Salua, that's nice. That could have been the 114 key, which you will find in that jacket. 
We need that for one of our tasks that we would have done earlier. Now we're going to head inside this area. So I like to use these big white silos as a point of reference. How I know where I am. And as we move up, I'm going to take a quick moment to look on the left. So this, this white vehicle here right next to that, that's a scav checkpoint. That's an extract for scavs. This is the admin gate right here. Just on the left, there's these, this bush here. I can search it. I wonder what's in there. We're continuing on. We're actually rounding the, the white silos. You can go through the middle of them, but I wanted to keep it easy on you. And as we get towards the end, there's actually another scav extract that I wanted to point out for you. This is the factory far corner, right along the white wall on the left. These are all things that you're obviously going to want to learn on your scav, but we'll save that for another video. This is ZB1011. This is an always on PMC only extract. And if we spawned on the opposite side of the map, which we did not, if we spawn on the other side, this would be one of our primary extracts. If we spawn on this side, Crossroads is one of our primary extracts. And you can always tell what primary extracts are because they won't have any question marks next to them. Any of the ones with question marks are limited use and have some sort of requirement for them to be available. If we get the opportunity, we'll point out one of those as we go. We're heading along this way. We're going to cross up onto the tracks. We're looking for this train car up here. So I call this one the chem train car. And this is used for chemical part one. What we're looking for are some documents that are stuffed in between this box and the side of the car on the left. They, be, they can be kind of hard to see, so make sure that you get a good lean in over there to grab them. Now we'll head out. Our next objective is inside this warehouse. We're gonna be looking at two key spawns in there. But first, we're gonna check the back of this blue van. It's inside it. We have two computers, and in the back, we actually have one here. So look look at the USB slots. And grab that flash drive. You're gonna want to look for those anytime you're around. Those are those are something that's a bit of a pain to find, and you need to get out of the raid to make them truly valuable. You need to find a bunch of those in raid and use them for tasks in the future. So I'd be holding on to those if you get one out. Our next spot to check out is in this blue locker, and we're specifically looking on the second shelf. You will find random loot in this locker, as well as a chance for the factory key. I showed you where we can find one of these earlier in the three-story dorms. Now, we're going to be looking for a checkpoint key, which isn't here, but it would spawn between the bag and the dude on that cushion right there. That'd be the military base checkpoint key, and I'll, I'll point out what the military base checkpoint is. We've actually already been there. I'll show you after we stop inside this building to our left. So we're going to follow all the way to the end. Take this door here, and we're going inside, down low, into the back left. And our destination is this locker. So inside this red box on the blue locker, you can find the 110 key. So we pointed out some safes earlier in the guide. And that's the 110 room that we pointed out. So we'll head out here, hang a right. I said that I'd point out the checkpoint. So earlier. When we looked for key inside a jacket, right up there, that's the checkpoint, right there. So the key that if we found it, it opens a door on the bottom. Now we're gonna head into this big old construction area. Go for a bit of a run. So there's lots of useful stuff in all of these buildings. I, I tried to limit as much as I could in the guide and, and trim down the things that I felt would be most useful for a new player to know. I didn't know where a lot of the keys were when I first started here, and I did hundreds of raids on customs. I really like this map. I find it find it an easy one to play. Uh, some people can find it a bit challenging, but once you figure out how to play it, uh, well, and this goes for any map, you know, they can become a fair bit easier to navigate. So our 29th location is for a task called the Extortionist. We picked up the unknown key. That's what you need in order to unlock this particular door. There we go. Our next spot to go into is this building number four. And I'm gonna look down at the end. You see that tipped over train car? We're gonna we're gonna remember that just for a short bit. So we're gonna go back there, but we're gonna take a different way. Before we head out though, we need to turn on the power. 
That's just inside here. So right inside the door to the left. I'm gonna turn that on. So this is inside building number four. It's actually a scav extract right here too. Before we leave, we have two things to check. The back of this trunk, the Ollie logistics key, which isn't here. We got some juice though, that's good. That's a really valuable key. That's a hard one to find. And then I'm gonna show you a little jump over. Get over here. So at the end of this car, you don't wanna run. You just wanna walk, gotta jump up. See, we failed that there. I'm gonna show you how to not fail this jump. So what you wanna do, look at these two sides. So there's this side right here. There's this side right here. We're actually trying to jump right, up, right about there in order to get up here. It seems seems wrong, but that's, it's how you do it. You can do this with, with level zero strength, with just basic strength. Just walk up here to the end and try and jump towards the end. So if you find that you're struggling with it, make sure that you get to the end of the car when you go and jump to that side where those, those shots are right there. This is a good way to get over. You can just run through the barbed wire, or give a little jump. I don't recommend running and jumping because you'll hurt your legs. That's a quick way to get over to the gas station or, or to the other side of the map where the dorms are. So we're going to take this little alley to get to the back of Warehouse 4. I like this spot because it has a lot of cover. It's nice if you want to sneak around. And as we round the corner... We see that tipped over train car. That's what I was saying to remember that. That's a... Uh, It's a good little reference point. Didn't want us to get lost there. So now we're going to head to the back. And we're at the old gas station. So the first one we were at was the new gas station. This is the old gas station. And if we see off in the back left, that's our last tanker. So this is the fourth of four tankers. We run up here. Place our marker on it. Make sure we survive. And the nice thing about those markers is that once you've placed them and survived that, that marker... You, you don't need to do that again. Even if you die, that marker will, will still remain. Uh, so we're not going to go too far into here, but I wanted to point out there's some good loot spawns right on these desks. You can actually find the best armor in the game. You can find anything, really, inside the gas station. And that's an extract. If we saw some green smoke around, I was hoping it might be here. If we saw some green smoke, that extract would be available. Unfortunately, no green smoke. So this door over here on the right is where we're going to take... Before we go, one of these additional extra things. You see this right here? Like, what's what's this? So right next to this rubble pile is the tree. We call it the tree of giving. This tree also can spawn any kind of random loot, even the best armor in the game. So always check that tree. A little med bag there as well. Now we're going to head through and off to the left. And then as we get around this train car, we're almost at the end of our journey. So we're coming up on location number 32 of 32, and it's underneath this big construction area. So this area can be a little bit dangerous. This is a spot where you can find Rishala. You can find Rishala in the dorms. You can find Rishala at New Gas Station. You can find Rishala here. We're looking for this door. So you need the factory key. You need the power to be on. And this is ZB013. Thank you so much for watching my guide. There are links that you may find useful in the description, as well as the spreadsheet that contains all of my research for these videos. Feedback and suggestions are always appreciated in the comments, and be sure to check back for future content to help you learn more about Tarkov. See you next time!